Hello and welcome back. My name is Dr. Christopher Gennari. This is Great Big History Podcast. In this episode, we do the Aztecs. The Aztecs from somewhere in the 1300s to the 1520s. They are going to dominate central Mexico. But interestingly, they don't start in central Mexico. They got pushed out of northern Mexico, what becomes northern Mexico, by other peoples, which meant they were not military, militarily sophisticated. They weren't strong. They weren't impressive. They got pushed out. And so you can understand... The trauma that happens. Like the new kingdom Egypt, they don't want this to happen to them again. And so what are they going to do? They are going to find a place that they can defend and then they're going to beat up their neighbors. They're going to make sure they are never beaten up again if they can help it. And so they end up moving to central Mexico. They build a capital on an island in the middle of a lake. This allows them for a uh, huge defense. There's actually a series of causeways, bridges that they build from the island to the shore that they could bring up and essentially create a giant moat so they could protect themselves. This is currently Mexico City. Oh, that lake has been filled in and it's gone. And... But it was the idea that they've created a place they could defend and in Knowing that they had a defense, they could attack others. And so th this is going to be our most militant or militarily sophisticated group. This was a militarized society in the name of the religion. And so most men are going to be warriors. And in conquering others, the people who are conquered are going to tr contribute food. So that the Aztecs don't have to labor. They don't have to work in the fields. They have other people feeding them. There's also something else they conquered other peoples for. And it wasn't from money. The way it is in the Middle East, the way it is in the, in the places we talked about in History 101. What they conquered other people for was for people. Why? Well, we go back to the religion. The religion is a polytheistic religion. And... One of the founding stories is about how there's a great war and the gods are wounded and they need transfusions of blood. And so what we have is human sacrifice to the gods. We have a system, a military, military system, a religious system that is going to emphasize the relationship between people and the gods and how the gods need human sacrifice. And the gods really love hearts. And you can see, if you're looking at the video, there is a temple. There is a guy being, there are people being carved open. Uh, you can see in the upper left corner, a picture of a heart. A pretty good picture of a heart. It's not, it's not the Valentine's Day heart. It's a... It's not a scientific heart, but it's, it's a pretty good approximation of what a heart looks like. And um, people are watching this happen. And we have a system that is built to do this. So the temples are built so that people can watch this happen. So that they're up in the, it's again, like the Mayans, a platform. Um, all of this is done in public. There are large squares where the people can gather. 
The advantage is to show the superiority of the Aztecs and the Aztec gods against other people. See, here's the thing. If you are going to have a system that emphasizes human sacrifice, nobody wants their kids, their wives, to be sacrificed. Which means the Aztecs have a problem. They have gods that want blood, but they have people that don't want to give the gods the blood. Which means you're going to have to conquer other people. So right from the outset, this is a system built to conquer other people. And it plays into the trauma from before. See, if I conquer you, and I cut the hearts out of your men... You think I am a, you might think I'm a terrible person, but you also think I am badass. Because I could do it. I could get it done. And so here is our justification for why we're able to conquer or why we're going to conquer lots of other people. This is the motivation. This is the thing that you can get. And rally the Aztecs behind. Because remember, we've talked about this in since History 101. There's always a problem of getting people to go off to war. Fighting with others and killing others is not easy. So you have to make them want to do it. Here's your justification. Um, and the Aztecs were capable of sacrificing huge numbers of people. Now, there's a, a story that went around that in the last major temple that was built, the largest temple in what will become Mexico City, in Tenochtitlan, is in 1487, right before Columbus shows up in um, the Caribbean. And there are stories of 80,000 people being sacrificed. And historians have gone through the numbers and they're like, okay, it's it's a five-day ceremony. If it's 80,000, it comes out to this many people. If they, it comes out to this many people per minute. And so there's been pushback recently. That's, that's the old number. That was the original number and it was used by the Spanish as a justification for wiping out the Aztecs. The modern number is... One twentieth of that, somewhere around four thousand. Now, four thousand is still a lot of people. This is industrialized murder. Well before the guillotine and well before the Holocaust. This is an entire system of capturing people, moving them to the capital city, housing them, keeping them alive. Then moving them to the temple, a whole group of people who now have to make sure they don't run away, they don't escape, they don't revolt, get them up the temple, sacrifice them, cut them open, cut out parts of them, then dispose of the bodies. This entire system has to be created in order to do this. This isn't just like... This is sophisticated, industrialized murder in the name of the religion. So the advantage is, <coughs> excuse me, people don't want to mess with you. People are coward. People don't revolt. The, the Assyrians, if you took my History 101 course, did much the same thing. They did not sacrifice people to the gods, but what they did was butcher everybody who fought against them, obliterated entire people, depopulated, committed genocide. The Aztecs are doing something similar. See, here's the thing. So what happens? So at the start of the year or the start of the summer, they come into a town and they say, you're going to give us 500 people. You pick. You could pick whichever 500 people you want, but we're getting 500 people. Now, why would you do that? Why would you give up your kids, your wife, your friends, your family? Why? Why not just revolt? Because of the second part of the unsaid part of the question, of the statement. 
you're going to give us 500 people or we're going to come back and take more. So you can choose the 500 you want or we'll come and take 5,000. Now we know people don't want to be sacrificed in this terrible, horrible way. So then why did they participate in it? Because they thought with justification that the Aztecs could do what they threatened. That the Aztecs could come and take, crush the city, take 2,000 people if they wanted. So that 500 is a good deal. That's how militarily superior the Aztecs were. That to get people to participate, they, they either participate because they want to, and nobody wants their kids to be sacrificed to a foreign god. So the other reason is out of fear. So they must have thought the Aztecs could do what they promised to do. So that tells us that the Aztecs are militarily superior to all the people around them. So huge advantage is you, people don't revolt. Because the Aztecs could destroy them. So the Aztecs can run their empire without too many problems, and they don't have to worry about being invaded. Remember, again, the trauma of being pushed out of their original home. The disadvantage? Pretty easy. Pretty obvious. Everybody hates you. Everybody hates you. Just like with the Assyrians. Everybody hates you. And so what's the result? That hundreds of thousands of people. Now Mexico had about 20 million people and the Aztecs uh, themselves had a couple million and ruled over a larger empire. But people will revolt the moment Cortez shows up. Cortez shows up and goes, Hello, I am Cortez. I have come for gold. And the people go, uh, The Aztecs have it. He's like, well, I will go get it from the Aztecs. And then they go and they see what the hell happens. And they're like, this. And Cortez will tell you that he's horrified by this. Horrified by the human sacrifice. In fact, some of the Spanish get captured and, and on what's called the Triste Noche, uh, T R I S T E, one word, and then Noche, N O C H E, the sad night where the, the, the Spanish were actually. Uh, besieged in Tecnotichlan and had to burst, burst out in the middle of the night. And so what a lot of the men did um, was stuff as much gold as they could into their armor because nobody thought they were coming back. They had gotten into Tecnotichlan. They had been brought in. They had been horrified by this, this, this blood god, these blood gods, disgusted by the Aztecs. There's a good amount of racism, but they're going to burst out. And this is one of the, one of those interesting stories. And so in the middle of the night, they make the run for it. They're going to burst out of the city. Now, remember, they're in a city on an island. They need to get over the bridges or get onto boats. You need to move fast and hope that you're not overwhelmed. And so guys think they're not coming back. So they take as much gold as they can. Shh. Stuff it into their pockets, stuff it in their pants, stuff it in their, their, their armor between their, their body and their armor. They load up. But what effect does that have? The people who did that were now much heavier, which meant they moved much slower. And when the alarm is raised, when people found out they were trying to run away, those are the people who got caught. And they got brought up to the top of the temple and sacrificed. Cortez nearly gets captured twice. He almost had his heart cut out. Twice. But the important part, as cool as those stories are, of this running battles, of these running battles, and so, um, is that Every time Cortez is defeated, and he's defeated several times in battle, he always had more people in the natives who would pick him up 
dust them off and say, you go back there and you go defeat those Aztecs. We're with you. So yes, the story is Cortes and 500 Spaniards destroyed the Inca Empire of two or five million people. Yes. And no, because it's Cortes and 500 Spaniards and 100,000 natives, local peoples who picked up arms to fight against the Aztecs. And that was the disadvantage of the Aztec way of doing this, was that as long as they were tough, they could, do, they could run their show. The moment somebody else showed up, immediately everyone fled to them. Now, Cortez probably would have lost if not for the secret weapon of disease. We saw this with Pizarro, sh smallpox, the cold, the flu. These, these, these germs that Westerners had, that Native Americans had no, indigenous peoples had no defense against. So yes, so the disease is also going right through the, the allies, but also right through the Aztecs. So that when Cortez finally conquers Tenochtitlan and, and, and goes through the city, it's not so much a conquest of a city as a conquest of a, of a morgue or a hospital. And so the human sacrifice of the gods was an advantage to the Aztecs, but it was also a disadvantage to the continuation of their empire. Nobody was willing to fight for them when the foreigners showed up. They, were, they wanted to fight against the Aztecs. And so Cortez in the 1520s with, the, with allied natives, but also with disease, wipes out the Aztecs. In our next episode, we're going to talk about what happens. What happens in the New World? And we're going to get into some big, big topics. So that is our next episode. So thank you very much. We're going to do problems in the new world. What happens after the Spanish conquest? And that will be next time. Thank you.